Welcome to today's interview. I brought on Angel Rebo. Angel, welcome. Hi, thank you. Thank you very much for having me, Heather. And thank you, everybody who's listening to us today. Yes, please give the listeners a little background. Where do you live and what do you do? Absolutely. Thank you. So I'm originally from Spain, but I lived uh, north of Dallas in a place called Plano in Texas, United States of America. And basically what I do, I do two things. Number one, uh, I, 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 both corporate CEOs and accomplished entrepreneurs, they hire me to bridge the gap globally for expansion and exposure as a way to accelerate their, their, uh, the growth of their businesses. And I can do that because in the last 23 years, I have worked internationally in more than 33 countries and helping more than 1,500 CEOs. That's why my brand, as you know, is the CEO Confident. But the, the, one of the main reasons why five years ago I left corporate America is because I, I, my life purpose is, is actually to help underprivileged kids in Latin America. And I created this nonprofit called Wisdom for Kids, and we, we help underprivileged kids in Latin America become entrepreneurs using their local resources. So that's, in a nutshell, my, my life, like connecting with C-levels and, and entrepreneurs to help them with their businesses and at the same time helping entrepreneurs or helping underprivileged kids in Latin America. So I'm curious, since you have such a business background, uh, something I've shared before and, and talk about often is the 80-20 rule, that any success in life is based 80% psychology or mindset, 20% mechanics or strategy. Can you touch on that? Yeah. So I would say that it's funny how in left corporate America, uh, I, I really didn't, didn't know how to like promote myself, right? I didn't know. Did I really do anything that I could base my new business on? Up on? Uh, on, 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 so that I could, I could really have a, 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 a very clear value proposition for the market. And I started to count. Basically, I started to count what, I have, what have I done in my life? So when I started to reflect on everything I had done in my 20 plus years in corporate America to say, okay, so what can I say to the world that is true and, and really makes me feel comfortable and I'm passionate about? And I started counting what I had done. And this is how I came up with the numbers I mentioned before. The reason why I'm saying this is because um, I was taking so much action. I was really using my energy all the time, all the time on trying to help and trying to build the business for these companies I was working for, that I, I, I think that really my mindset, my, my passion, my enthusiasm was the forefront of my strategy. Many times I had to go and I had to start helping, you know, groups of entre uh, entrepreneurs to become our business partners. I had to help literally hundreds of salespeople that had no idea how to sell. And I had to be, become their leader. And they didn't, know, they didn't know me of anything. Yeah. And the main reason why I was kind of successful with them is because all the time I would be in front of them and I would be using my passion and my energy and convince them that they had to do the same thing and that their attitude would be much more important than any other lesson or book or knowledge that they could embrace. So again, I believe, I strongly believe that we are beings of energy and energy defines everything that we do in our lives. Totally, totally. To the point and to the risk that sometimes we like what we do so much that we spend so many hours, right? <laughs> yeah. That we don't realize how much we are spending. I remember that at some point, uh, I've been married uh, for 17 years, uh, soon to be 18. And I remember that I used to spend two weeks in a row traveling in Latin America or sometimes even in Europe, two weeks in a row. And remember my wife told me one time, Angel, you were so much gone that I thought <laughs> that there was someone else. And I thought that you were going to, literally, you one of these days you were going to go back from one of your trips and you would tell me, Angel, that's over. <laughs> you know, this is over. But uh, it's funny how, although I was thriving, I was having, using my passion, I was teaching so many people, I was working on so many deals, I was still had my mind still at home. And I was remorseful because I was never at home enough with my family, right? So again, to everybody listening to us, I, I definitely think that 80% of everything that you do and accomplish in your life is related to your attitude and to what you really decide you're going to do. It's not, it doesn't mean I'm, you know, I'm, uh, I don't, I'm, I don't, I'm not anxious sometimes. It doesn't mean I'm not fearful sometimes. It just means that when I feel that way, I immediately realize I am at that, at, at that rabbit hole yeah. And then I take action. I take action to change my state. You know, I. I yeah. But how do you I, I guess I would call that. How do you course correct? Because something I say often is, you know, if you're on forward momentum, you're on the train, you're going, but you get derailed yeah. by a thought and experience and interaction. How do you course correct? 
catch yourself and get back on. Like that takes training. That, that takes that ta- that takes experience, but I think yeah. that uh, that takes the creation of a habit. Let me tell you a few things that I do personally to be daily on a on 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 a, on, a, on, on, on a good on a good path. Okay, because obviously we are human beings and we always have are being distracted. We were talking about distraction before before we started the call today. Yeah. But number one, I start the day regardless of how I wake up. And sometimes it's hard for me to sleep. And sometimes I wake up and saying, oh, I don't really want to wake up today, blah, blah, blah. I wake up and every single morning, I have a group of people that keep me accountable every single morning. And we conduct something called an intention experiment. Every single day, we do that for 30, 30 minutes to an hour. We do an intention experiment. So we talk and we decide, you know, once a week, we decide what we're going to be intending for. And every single morning, 8 Central US, every single morning, we intend for something, okay? So that's the first thing. So every single morning, my mind starts the day meditating. That's the first thing. Second, I have a series of uh, affirmations, right? And I believe in affirmations a lot. So actually I have here one of the sheets I have with me all the time. It happens to be here on my table uh, now. It says I have one in my side table next to my bed and I have one in my car. And you know, when I feel down, I start reading those affirmations, which are extremely powerful, and they change my state. Literally, they change my state. Something else that I do, I don't know if you heard it before, but there's a bell, there's a, an, actually an app. Pardon the interruption. If this content is resonating with you, I want to offer you some additional resources. Check out my website, heatherhakes.com, and take the free life assessment. This is a great tool to take inventory in life where you're feeling in alignment and abundant and where you're feeling stuck, stressed out, or as someone recently emailed me, completely ruining my life. I've also created a self-study course all about mindset and manifesting. Again, check out my website, heatherhakes.com and click on course. Finally, if you are ready to deep dive and really transform your life, I offer one-on-one coaching. I will teach you what has taken me years and tens of thousands of dollars to learn in which you can start implementing right now. To learn more and schedule your free strategy call, visit heatherhakes.com forward slash coaching. Now back to regular programming. There's an app that the only thing that it does, it rings a bell every, every 15 minutes through the entire day. Every time that I hear this bell, every time I hear this bell, I change my attention and my focus because I have already, I, my, my, this bell is already related to a thought, a thought that I, I am infinitely powerful. I can do this. I'm going to generate a lot of success and, and, uh, and uh, richness do, during the day and riches during the day, right? So if you have something, if you have a cue that allows you to break the distraction mode in which we are taken every single day, and you go back to a place that you, you have that you have developed in order to change your state. And if you do that consistently, you build that. Eventually it will be built. The thing is, how do you start? I remember that when I started doing my affirmations, I would forget to carry the paper with me. Obviously for a week, two weeks, I never had it with me until I started to have it all with me all the time. Yeah. I don't know if you've ever attended a, a Tony Robbins event. He talks about changing the estate a lot, right? And he does it in a different way. He actually makes his or puts his body to move. Yeah. I love dancing. I don't know about you, Heather, but I love dancing. Yeah. Something I do from time to time, I put my earbuds and I have a playlist of music that changes my state. And I literally start dancing here in my office. Yeah. True story. I just love to do that. So these are different ways because again, it's a matter of changing your state and going back to a place. Yes, I can do that. Let's keep doing, keep, let's keep doing it. Let's keep doing it. Let's keep doing it. But ultimately, and, and actually similar to you, I have a playlist on my phone called Dance Party. So I do it okay. too. <laughs> but what you're saying is it's that it's about being intentional. So, you know, knowing where your emotions are and your thoughts and your focus. And then you have these constant reminders to, to keep you on track because how easy is it to go down the rabbit hole and to get distracted? And let's talk about that. We're full of distractions. We're constantly inundated with our phone and social and the news and other people's needs. And so how do we, you know, stay in our zone of genius and limit these distractions? 
Yes, we, it's a learn. It's a learning process. We have to learn to do that because, unfortunately, when we reach some point, you know, we all have, you know, we all went through formal education, right? K to twelve, and then we went to college, and then, you know, uh, we we went to work for someone else for many years, right? To have, to gain some experience in some field, blah blah blah. You know, so again, we were in this perfect world. We were where we all were, you know, made right. But at the same time, we were being taught certain things and we were continuously being distracted. Besides that, we carry a cell phone all the time with us. Probably it's a smartphone. So the distractions are multiplied 10 times, 20 times, you know? So, I mean, this is the reality. How do we get out of that? So the number one thing, become aware. Be aware that you're being distracted. Be aware that you are being distracted. Besides those bells that I told you before, something that I do all the time, I like to, actually there's this method you probably heard about it when I'm working, and I have uh, I put I put a, a, an automatic timer on my on my on my computer, which is the Pomodoro. You probably have heard about the Pomodoro, the 25 minute slots, that you are fully focused for 25 minutes and you do nothing else but uh, you know being for 25 minutes working, and then you take five minutes a break, and then you continue with for 25 minutes. Again, it's about building a system. It's about building a system that keeps you completely focused. Again, being focused is a learning. Is is you learn how to be focused because we have been taught how to be distracted all day long, all day long. I, I would like to refer to. A, a, I would I would like to um, suggest to everybody listening to us today, Heather, that they go and watch a movie called The Social Dilemma. If you haven't watched it already, The Social Dilemma, yeah. and you will understand why all the C levels, former C levels of these social media companies, they don't allow their kids to have cell phones. You will understand why that's the case, because they don't want to create an, a habit of being more and more and more distracted. So, uh, you know, it's it's all about being aware that you're being distracted. That's step number one. And second, what do you do? What do you put in place? What systems do you put in place, Heather, so that you are able to be aware of them and then do something and and, the, and then be focused on what you what you really want to entertain or do or get done that day. For sure. And awareness is key. But so I want to ask you this, because I think what we're touching on is, you know, again, it's that focus and being intentional. But if you've been so conditioned to be distracted, to to live in what I call a boring S box, this comfort zone of, you know, like we're kind of puppeteers. How do you wake up from that? How do you wake up and go, whoa, there's another way? Number one, being open for, for I mean, be, being open to opportunities. How much time do you do you use a day per day or per week, like to try to learn something new? Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, how many people do you do really actively, proactively look for some other ways of doing what they are doing or or for doing and learning new skills? How many every single week? I think that more than ever, that's necessary. Okay, yeah. that's one. The second thing is, okay, so we're talking about our bodies, our health, our mind, our spirit. What are we talking about here? Are we, are we, are we having some sort of balance here? What are we doing? What, I mean, are we, are we sitting down and reflecting on what are we doing on all those different roles of our life and trying to learn something new? We cannot expect things to change if we don't change, if we don't take action, if we don't start learning something new, right? And it's only, yes? Sorry to cut you off. One thing I want to punch on there is uh, I've gotten away from it is so standard and and pushed mainstream action. You got to take action. You got to struggle. You got to you got to um, map it out and have strategy. And I I want to ask you. For me, I've experienced a difference in in taking action and trying to get motivated versus that inspired action and being guided for the next step. There's a difference. Mm-hmm. So which one? are you doing but i think that there's 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 a space for both i think that we have times during the day in which you have to be wandering around and and really looking for the inspiration and i do that and other 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 you know instances during the day or during the week in which you are taking action and and, and building up on that energy again going back to the main idea of energy right so when you are co-creating, when you are constructing, I think that you really have to put an effort and you have to take action and you have to use as much energy as you can in that direction. But at the same time, the only the downside of doing that is that maybe you don't listen enough. 
I'm going to your point, inspire action. I think that you have to be listening. My perfect, excuse me, my, my favorite business mantra is take imperfect action now. Take imperfect action now. Because I think that people are fearful of taking action because of the consequences, okay? But listening to what you are telling me, I couldn't agree more that taking action, taking imperfect action, that's the bell, taking imperfect action, it only is useful to you as far as you listen, as far as you listen. Because as you are taking action and you're taking one route, you are going to start seeing what happens around you. What are your clients telling you? What are your suppliers, your vendors, your friends, your relatives? What are they telling you about what you are doing? And that, again, that applies to many different roles in your life, right? But it's a, when, you're, when you're hearing what happens in your journey is when you are able to then say, oh, my God, maybe that's another idea. Maybe that's a good idea, right? And then you course correct and you go to, you know, into another direction. But I think that life is a balance and it's a mixture of both things of places where you find your inspiration. And I think that you, if I, you know, I think that a long time ago, we stopped listening to our heart. Mm. We stopped listening to our heart. These, these little boys, you know, the, people say, no, no, we have this chatter and 60,000, you know, thoughts a day and blah, blah, blah. And this is killing us. Listen, something which is 100% sure is that the only reason why we are conscious of these 60,000 thoughts is because we are not our thoughts, okay? So just, just, I'm going to repeat this. If we were our thoughts, we wouldn't be aware of our thoughts, okay? So we are something else that from outside, okay? So from outside, we are listening to our thoughts. That's who we really are, okay? So it means that we are much more than our physical body that we are, you know, you are listening to or you are watching right now on this conversation we are having with Heather. We are much more. So this voice that something tells us, hey, Angel, maybe you should do this, or Heather, you should do that, or hey, have you realized that? You know what I typically have my, my most amazing inspiration? I have it in the shower in the morning, literally. I'm having it when, I'm ha when I have this music allowed, you know, driving my convertible, like at the stop, at the, at the, at the speed limit. This is when, you know, I'm having really like, my most incredible exp inspirational experiences and thoughts and say, oh my God, I should do that. I should do that. So I think that, again, there's a relationship between our energy, our state, and what we're able to create at any given time. So we have to be open. We have to be listened. And we have to listen mainly to our heart. Because I think that from our heart, which, typically we, which, which we typically don't listen to, is where most of the answers are to what we to our inspiration and to, to taking our action eventually. And that's a powerful message because we have been so conditioned to seek externally for answers, for fulfillment, for happiness. And the truth is everything we seek is within. But how do you, how do you reprogram to stop seeking and to connect within? Like you do this morning meditation with this group, but I, I think it, it's about being intentional I, and choosing. Yes, something easy that has always helped me a lot too and something that everybody can do is, is going back to gratitude. Mm -hmm. Gratitude. I think gratitude is one of those magic words yeah. that we all relate to. We, always, we will always have memories. We will always have people that we are grateful or things that we are grateful for and that we can really go to and immediately start changing and, you know, going uh, and, and, and realizing who we really are. I, I use a headband. I, I, I have to say that when I started meditating many years ago, I started using a headband that tells you when you are in a better state, when you go to alpha. Mm. Uh, and um, also for the people that are not familiar with this, basically going to deeper states of meditation, right? right. Um, it's funny how I learned how to meditate. And when I was going to a place of gratitude and love, mm. my headband and the app of the headband started to show me that I was going in the right path. So I believe that as much as we are energy, we are also antennas and we are continuously tuning into something in the universe, call it God, call it the infinite you know, potential, uh, the unified field, call it as you wish. But there's something out there that we can really tune into that we've, we've have not been taught. We have not learned how to tune into that place but exists. Yeah. And I think that that place, that place of 
gratitude and starting from gratitude can take us there much easier and, and, and easily, easily. I really think so. I love that. And I couldn't agree more, but it's about creating that space to connect to that higher power. A message you shared with me that I'd like you to touch on or, you know, explain, you said that we are infinitely powerful. What does that mean? Because so many people are living thinking, you know, they're not enough. They're not capable. I can't whatever, but why or how are we infinitely powerful? Yeah. Well, we're infinitely powerful because, I mean, we were created, I mean, look around, okay? So just look around, just, I mean, regardless of where you are, I'm sure that you've been in nature at some point, look at the amazing things, beautiful things that you can see and we have access to, okay? I believe that we are, the, we come from the exact same place where those things were created from, the exact same place. Every single day, I'm helping both executives and entrepreneurs. Uh, uh, right now, we cannot do that, but I used to go to Latin America to, to teach you know, uh, and, and their privileged kids all the time. So I'm, I'm continuously in touch with people that either have done amazing things in the world or kids that are starting their, their lives and they have done nothing and they live in poverty. You know, so I have been able to see and to realize that we all have an innate ability to create happiness and to create value for the other people around us. Yeah. I have always seen that, and you are, for instance, you are a, pod, a podcast host, right? So I, I truly believe that you have an incredible power to ask questions because probably with one of these questions that you ask some of your guests, the life of that person that was listening to your podcast episode said, wow, and that life was changed forever. That's the power of a conversation. That's the power of having this, you know, making these statements and statements and interacting between you and me. So I continuously see how people have been able to change the people of the, the rest of the people around them all the time, just by being who they are. That's why I believe that we are infinitely powerful. We have the ability to change not only ourselves, but everything around us. I truly believe it. And there have been scientific experiments done and they have been people they have been scientists measuring measuring literally measuring the energy created on uh, i mean there's many different neuroscientists that actually they do meditation all the time and they gather thousands of people and they meditate together and the amount of energy that is being created and the miracles that happen in those places yeah. are beyond human so that's this is documented i'm not making anything up that's why i think yeah. that the problem is, though, people are in fear. Why? Because they, we are being taught to fit in. We never, there's not, there's, when we leave, you know, high school, when we leave high school, how many of us, we, do we really know how to collaborate with the rest of the world? Do we really know how to create wealth all together as opposed to compete against each other? Are we collaborating more or are we competing more? I, I remember last year when I was helping here in the Dallas area, with some webinars uh, for entrepreneurs about pivoting in times of crisis. I always talk that if we were able to develop one skill only, only in business, which is collaboration, proper collaboration, most of our problems will immediately vanish, disappear. I mean, it's, it's, it's what it is, but we have been taught of, or we have been learning throughout our lives, compete, 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 compete. You know, even, even sending emails, it's, it's, it's an email blast. We are blasting people with it. I mean, it's all this verbiage. If you realize, I mean, the words have so much power. We have developed all these statements and verbiage and, and phrasing and wording that it's like all so violent. In reality, innately, we are not violent. Right. We are not violent. We, we really want to live in peace and we want to, you know, thrive and we want all of our neighbors to see to, to thrive along with us, right? So we, that's why I always say we are infinitely powerful and all of us can make a difference in this world and we can make a difference in everybody else's lives because I see that every day. Well, and I love that. So that message is that collaboration is more powerful than competition. And you're right, especially in this whole energy field, we are all connected. So why would we want to compete with ourselves? Let's work together to, yeah, I love that. Yeah. 
So question for you from your background and, and different things we've talked yes. about today, what is like an overarching theme or a key takeaway you want listeners to get? Yes, thank you. I mean, obviously we've talked about, I mean, you've, you've asked very, very good questions. I think we've tapped on, onto very uh, important takeaways, but if I had to only you know, t- share one with the audience is that regardless of where you are, regardless of what your emotions and your feelings are today, regardless of how fearful you might be for taking action, doing something, not doing it, you know, um, life is too short, really. Life is too short to keep on postponing things that you know inside of you, you already have this voice. You have heard this voice saying, hey, I think that if I did that, that I would have so much fun. And, and I think that I could even make people's lives happy, happier. So I, that's why I always, always, always share this motto, this, this mantra of mine of taking, taking imperfect, imperfect action now. You know, I think that when we become comfortable with showing up, up uh, ourselves and then showing up in the world as imperfect beings, I think that we start changing who we really are and we start becoming, we start becoming comfortable with being uncomfortable. And that, that, has, that can definitely change our lives forever. Uh, that would be definitely the piece of advice I would like to leave the audience with, Heather. Amen. I love that. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so I have a few rapid fire questions to ask you to wrap up the interview. Of course. First one being, what is a quote or motto that you live by? Uh, everything seems impossible, seemed impossible until, until it was done. And it's, I think it's by Nelson Mandela. Yes, I know. And I even love in that, you know, the words impossible, it's I'm possible. Exactly. So I love exactly. that. Exactly. Totally. <laughs> what is a book you're currently reading or highly recommend? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm reading a book called uh, The... Baker's Dozen. It's about the 12 principles of business operators and C-level executives. It's a, it's a very simple, very, very easy to read book that everybody that has a business or is an entrepreneur should be, should be reading. The, Baker, the Baker's Dozen of Highly Effective Business Operators. Really great, great book by Neville Joffe is the author, by Neville Joffe, J-O-F-F-E. All right. Final question. What advice would you give your younger self? Take more risks. Mm. Take more risks. Definitely. Don't play it safe. Take more risks. But Be more why? adventurous. <laughs> why? Because you're always backed? Like it'll always... Why? Because when I look back, I think sometimes I think I wish I had done this before. Mm. I wish I had taken also that that was offered to me at that point that I preferred to play safe and I didn't take it. I wish I had... I could, I, I would. I wish I had experienced more things and I would have said yes to many more things in my life. Okay. Great note to end on. Angel, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. It's been a pleasure to be here, Heather. And again, thank you everybody who's been listening to us. Mm-hmm.